I'm here today in Bradenton, Florida, and uh, it's another removal from under a mobile home, and uh, I'm going to have to peel that flap up to uh, gain access. I haven't looked at how big it is underneath, but there's a ton of traffic going in and out, so I can only imagine. Okay, so you can see I don't have much space to work with. And I exposed as much as I can expose. And I can only scoot just so far back there. Well, easily anyway. And this is a massive hive. And uh, today is going to be a bit of a challenge. That's all I can say. So I'm going to start vacuuming right now and uh, exposing this comb. And go from there. I think they're relegated between these two beams right here, joists, whatever you want to call them. So, um, you can see uh, me cutting away some of that cover. I stabbed into some of their honey in the very back. Hopefully that's as far as they go back. You know, just as what I have them exposed. I don't think they go back too much further. A uh, problem I could run into, though, is... Is not being able to get back there good. And uh, the queen and a lot of them run back there towards the middle. That's your worst nightmare. So I'm going to try to prevent that from happening. Um, usually what I try to do is spray Honey Bee Gone in the very back behind them without disturbing them too much because you don't want to get honeybee gone all over the hive but I try to cordon off the area so to speak with honeybee gone so they can't run uh, but that's going to be a real challenge here so let's see what I can do alright so I've vacuumed a lot of these bees off the comb pretty massive hive and you can tell it's been here a while this comb's dark the comb gets lighter back there, and hopefully that's about where it ends, like I said before, because I really can't fit under here too well. And look at this, you know, steel support beam in the way, too, right in the middle. So, I'm just going to have to do what I can with what I can. Thankfully, I'm a pretty thin person, and um, I'll be able to maneuver back here somewhat, but... Jeez, this is uh, going to be very tough. Okay, so this comb in here is really uh, only enough, uh, I guess, long enough, you know, up and down um, height-wise to fit in a medium. But I don't want to put it in my medium hive because I don't think it's going to be enough room for this colony. So I'm going to stack the comb. See, that's uh, an upper layer and a lower layer. <laughs> and I'm not even sure how much comb I'm going to keep of this. I have to decide because if you do uh, keep too much comb, sometimes you can get greedy and the hive beetles will take advantage of um, the upheaval. Especially here in the south and, and Florida. So... Um, Anyway, um, so far I've only got this first row removed. Uh, and I'm having to uh, gently just, you know, rock it back and forth because I can't get a knife in there. And I'm going to have to just slowly work my way back. But it, overall, it's going pretty good so far. <laughs> Even though I've just begun, I think it's going to be all right. And, uh, you know, the honey is in the very back, and things won't get messy until I get back there. So, and I'll deal with that when I get to it. All right. Here's the first bucket of bees. It's pretty full. A lot of bees are attracted to it, uh, possibility the queen's in there, but uh, you just never know. So uh, I'm going to keep going with this. I uh, have a new bucket installed, fresh one, 
because you know every once in a while you got to give these girls a breather <laughs> and uh, I'm probably only going to keep three frames of brood comb because if I do more than that it's just going to get uh, too risky for high beetles uh, overtaking them when I get them home here's what's left I'm going to continue vacuuming all these miscellaneous bees hanging out and then I got to get to the messy part in the back with the honey see all that back there that white comb or yellow white comb But see, once I have all this cleaned up and most of the bees out of here, I'll be able to scoot under there easier and uh, and deal with that. I just I'm just glad it's not very messy right here up front with honey. I'm thankful for that. So I'll cross that bridge back there when I come to it. All right, I'm going to continue uh, removing this brood comb. Okay, it's a little bit chaos around here because there's robbing. This is uh, a bunch of robbing from other hives in the neighborhood, but that's it's no big deal. It just uh, makes it look more chaotic than it really is. But uh, here's what's left in here. See, I've already cut all this comb out, and there's all this honey in the back. And <laughs> believe me, it's very tough to get back there, so. So anyway, I'm going to have to uh, scoop these bees out of the way a little bit and climb back there more and uh, do what I got to do. This is the last part of it, hopefully. I mean, I'm assuming it doesn't go like 10 feet back more. <laughs> you got to hope that it's like only another half a foot back. Ooh, man. All right. This is tight. This is tight. Okay, so I have all the honeycomb cut out now, and it was not easy. But y'all heard me complain enough about that already. So that's all cut out except for the trails. But you know what? There's going to be some robber bees come and get all this stuff in the next day or two. I mean, they're already being robbed out, so this is going to be cleaned up further. I just can't get all the way back there to scrape all that out. It's out good enough. <laughs> so, uh... The customer's going to put insulation in here and cover all this space, so even if they smell this, they can't move back in. Uh, so, I honey be gone to all of this right now. I haven't seen the queen yet, but she's probably in the vacuum cleaner or she'll turn up. I'm not worried about that right now. I'm just glad I got all this honeycomb out of here. And. Uh, Right now, I'm about to uh, empty the vacuum buckets into the hives because I, was, I sprayed honeybee gone in there, and they're not going to go back in there now. I pretty much saturated that underside and the outer entrance. So now they're going to have no place to go but my hive. And there's two buckets to empty into them right now. I'm about to dump all these bees in here, so there's going to be a lot of bees airborne. I have some. You do? Okay. Thank you so much. Reunited and it's <laughs> 
Oh yeah. Here we go, folks. I know most of you wouldn't do it like this, but uh, that's how I work. And that's how things get done. Once you have uh, the place where you removed all the comb under control with uh, honey be gone and all the bees are out of there, you can start emptying bees into the hive and uh, create all this chaos. They'll settle down by the, the night time and I'll close up the entrance and take them home. Yeah, I know I need probably need more room. I'll take care of that later. But uh, they need a lot of bees covering that comb anyway. Um, so high beetles won't overtake them. Cool. Now I gotta wait till dark. I'm gonna go eat lunch. Okay, it's about an hour or so before dark. And I've got these bees to where they're a lot more under control. Um, so it's just a periodic update and I'll check back right at sunset and you'll see that uh, all this chaos going on right now. They're just feeding on scraps right now. That's fine. Uh, but come nightfall, this is going to become a lot more calm and under control and I'll be able to seal up the hive and take them home with no problem. And any bees that are left on the front entrance like that, I'll uh, start smoking them inside and slam dunk. Alright, it's about nightfall and uh, they're pretty much all in, just except for a few stragglers. That's no big deal. I'll smoke them in. But as you can see, I mean, uh, no more chaos. Everything's fully under control. Well, let's look under here. No more bees. None. So I'm about to seal them up and uh, take them home and uh, I'll look for the queen tomorrow. I'm sure she's probably in there. Okay, I got them home, opened them up immediately of course and added this super on top which has a lot of their honey supplies that I gave back to them and uh, other foundationless comb uh, to use as guides to uh, build up into the upper super so uh, they're set for now I haven't determined yet if a queen's in there but um, I can't do that right now because I had to get that super ready with the honey and if I leave that out too long exposed it's going to cause a lot of robbing so I can't go into their brood chamber today. Um, I had to make it a really quick operation but um, I'm just going to assume she's in there for right now but I'll check within the week after they uh, get this honey up at the top uh, from leaking and um, stabilized so it won't uh, send out on a, a honey alarm so to speak all right 